Look Outreach is underwritten by the generous support of Munter Enterprises. Family owned and operated since 1972, integrity is important as our family name is on every project. Our word is our bond. Munter Enterprises. Just build it. Welcome back, everyone. Boy, I, it's very apparent to me, and I'm sure it's apparent to you, the electorate is on fire. Uh, I'm meeting so many interesting people who heretofore maybe didn't even consider running for office or maybe always had it in them that they wanted to be in public service. But a lot of very interesting people are getting involved in politics. And lo and behold, we uh, uh, recently found out about Tedra Cobb, my guest, who has decided to run for Congress, 21st Congressional District. Boy, what an undertaking. So first, welcome, Tedra. Thank you very much. Very nice to have you here. Thank you for having uh, me. I always say to anybody that comes in here, I don't care whether they run for supervisor, commissioner, or they're running for a congressional seat. Boy, it takes a certain kind of person to want to do this. You know, um, I, want, I want our viewers to get to know a bit about you because and then they can make the picture, complete the picture for sure. themselves. Um, you lived in the area in the 21st Congressional for about 30 years, you were saying. Yeah. And when I looked at your resume, I was very impressed with the number of kinds of public service things that you were involved with. Give us kind of a quick overview of those 30 years and what you've done. Sure, sure. I did health care for many years. Uh, I started a community health agency, primarily working with people who are uninsured and underinsured. Mm. And during that time, I ran for county legislator. Mm. And I won, and I served for eight years as a county legislator. Um, and I left my position uh, in community health and started my own consulting business. Mm -hmm. And I've had that business since 2003. And I actually travel all over the North Country, but I also travel all over New York State to, and internationally. Got you. Uh, one thing uh, stood out, uh, Governor Cuomo appointed you. Uh, tell us about that. Sure. To a commission. Yeah, he, uh, he appointed me to the New York State Commission um, on healthcare, on the healthcare redesign. Mm -hmm. So we were looking at healthcare and the delivery system and how to make it more efficient and effective mm -hmm. in uh, Northern New York. I was no longer doing healthcare uh, directly at the time, mm -hmm. uh, but I was appointed, I think, because of my skills in problem solving and because of the work I had done uh, as a legislator and uh, maybe communicating and being a good listener and problem solver. Right. Uh, I'm going to cycle back on two of those words because sure. I think they're the key to any anyone who gets involved in politics is the sure. ability to listen and yeah. the ability to solve problems. Novel approach, huh? So it uh, the uh, I would imagine that health care is high on your priority list, given what you just said to me, but also given what's going on on a national level right. in terms of the confusion and the complexities that are thrown at something that heretofore would have been probably solved much more easily with cooperation and negotiation and problem solving. Right. Yeah, the things that drive me are my principles and problem solving, those are the two things that I circle back to all the time. Got it. So when I look at healthcare, I want to solve the problem of people being uninsured, mm -hmm. but also if people are uninsured, then hospitals close, nursing homes close, the jobs are lost. So healthcare is about you and I being healthy and getting access to health care, but it's also, especially in the 21st district, about the economy. And I'm not just talking about little J jobs, I'm talking about the overarching economy. We can't do economic development and recruit new businesses if the hospital in Glens Falls is closed, mm -hmm. or if the hospital in the Adirondacks is closed. Tourists aren't going to go to the Adirondacks if there's no hospital. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to be thinking about, about the economy and the the, the connectedness mm -hmm. of healthcare. And then of course, we need to think about you and I as human beings and that we need access to affordable and portable healthcare. Yeah, you know what? And when people are dial in at many different levels at what you just said, you know, there are some people that are less fortunate than others that healthcare is almost unattainable to them. It, it's a major a, a goal for them just to protect their families. Yeah. And then you move around the scale. But you make an interesting point about tying it to the economy. 
and not giving the economy a priority over healthcare, but just how the connecting, uh, the connector works there. That, and, you, and you're perfectly right about that. The well-being of a community is directly uh, linked to its economic health. You're right. Yeah. And so th when we think about economic drivers in this region, education, healthcare, tourism, right. Right. Here at the, at the on the this part of the district, which Warren County and uh, mm -hmm. Southern, we have some nanotechnology. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have farming, so farming here, farming in St. Lawrence County. Mm -hmm. But we also have Jefferson County, which has Fort Drum, which is the largest single site employer That's in right. the state. That's right. So for me, it's mm -hmm. looking at the region as a whole, mm -hmm. and looking at the economy as a whole, and how we are advocating for our economy and the economic development as a whole. Again, not just little J jobs, but how we are advocating for and promoting the economy and all of the interconnectedness in this region. We need to think and fight for our whole region. Well, you know what? That sounds like a true problem solver, by the way. Somebody who looks at the whole picture and says, let's take all of these pieces and see how they interconnect. You know, um, uh, I had read someplace also that, and this folds right in, uh, to what you're saying, uh, the environment is especially important here throughout a large portion of the 21st because of the precious resource we have that needs to be protected. It could be the lakes, could be the mountains, whatever, but that's interconnected as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I actually was um, on the St. Lawrence River, so I live in St. Mm. Lawrence County, and the St. Lawrence River really runs over across the whole top it of does. this district. That's right. And I was meeting with someone from a land trust, and they were saying they're trying to dis they're trying to figure out do they pull up cattails, because if they do, then mercury will be released again. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. not done with these environmental questions. Yeah, no, we're far not from done. It. We are far from being done. <laughs> That's right. But that question's happening there. While on the Hudson, we're still talking about the you know the mm -hmm. the the health of the river, mm -hmm. right? So these are things that connect us, and this summer the St. Lawrence River flooded. Mm -hmm. We got no FEMA funding. Mm -hmm. We should have. Mm -hmm. So we need to be advocating for those natural resources, but also because of the economic vitality yeah, of the, the people. Impact that that has. That's right. Sure, of course. That's right. That, those are economic drivers in this district. Mm -hmm. And so we need to safeguard them. Well, you know what? Uh, again, I'm really glad you took the time to come in and introduce you to the people that we reach. And uh, as we move through the campaign, you're welcome back anytime. We can drill down more specifically Thank on you. issues and your position on these things so that our viewers can make an informed decision. Thank you for having me. I you're appreciate welcome, Tedra. It. A pleasure to meet you. Thank you. To see this interview again, you can head to our website, looktvonline.com.